Funding for the following program was provided by... This is who we are, First Southern National Bank. Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean. Careful craftsmanship, continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. She done told me, Papa done told me too. Said, boy, that girl you're running with, she ain't no good for you. Well, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Well, that's all right. Now, Mama, anyway, you do. Bobby's gonna play some guitar. Well, then you won't be bothered with me hanging around your door. Well, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Well, that's all right now, Mama. Anyway, you do. gentlemen, Pat Kirtley.
Yeah, that was a tune I wrote called Arnold's Coming Home. It was written about 1993, and it's to, uh, dedicated to one of our Kentucky guitar heroes, Arnold Schultz, down in western Kentucky. He was one of, the, one of our heroes. He influenced uh, those guitar player guys, and he also influenced Bill Monroe. And um, I'd like to play you this tune. Um, and uh, when Nate played earlier, and he played that tune called Country, uh, I thought about the, all the words of that song. I thought about when I wrote this song that I'm going to play for you now, and it's called Rural Life. Um, we'll dedicate this one to Tim. Tim asked me to play it tonight, and um, it's one of my favorite tunes. And um, it was uh, written in, I guess, 1975, and it was a big hit on the radio, and you can still hear it today, and it's called Dance With Me.
Thanks so much. So this, I wrote this tune and it was called, I called it Shuffling Sam because I imagined this guy back in, maybe back in the 20s or something and he's on a street corner in some city somewhere and he dances and he's got a little cup and people come and put money in it and that's what he does and he's Shuffling Sam. And uh, later I was reading a music history book and I found out there was indeed a guy who danced named Shuffling Sam and he toured with a blues singer named Memphis Minnie back in the 20s. So, shuffling Sam. Thank you so much. Well, I'd like to play this tune for you that I wrote, I think it was about 1990 or 91, I wrote this tune. And it was a really emotional time for me. And this is what came out of it. And I've played it for people all over the world. It's, it's my hit song. It's the one people ask me, will you play that song tonight? And um, they also ask me if it has words. And I said, it doesn't have words, it's instrumental. We, we guitar guys, this is our thing. We play instrumental music and we try to bring everything out that words would, would have, but the words form in your head. And when you listen to the song, whatever words you hear are the words to that song at that moment for you. And that's why we do the way that we do it. And that's why it doesn't have words when it comes out of the instrument. And still, they insist that it should have words. And at home, in a drawer somewhere, I've collected over the years, I've got 11 complete sets of lyrics for this song that people have written and sent to me. And um, I appreciate it so much, but, you know, it's not going to have words. This is, this is the way that it is because there's a reason. Anyway, and I'm going to dedicate it to you tonight and play it for you. It's called Wasn't It You.
Thank you so much. All right, Pat, I've known you a long time, but I don't know if I really went back to your roots. Now, I know you know the history probably more than anybody. You have delved into the, the history of thumb picking uh, in Kentucky. Tell us just a brief bit about where that started. Let's go way back. Well, it started, if you want to go to the, to the roots of it, it started in two places. It started with blues, the blues players, and this was around, you know, the turn of the century into like 1910, 1915, all that stuff was sort of happening. And it was around. It was, you know, we don't know where the players were, but they were all over, and there was that theme of that music. And then the other thing that's surprising where thumb picking came from is women, women playing the guitar. It was called the parlor guitar era. And this was back, I know. Parlor guitar. Parlor guitar era. This was back in the late 1800s. There was, you know, America, it was the, we were out of the Civil War and there was prosperity and there were factories and people had jobs and people had money and people were building houses. And one thing that you wanted in your house was a piano. Because why? Why not? You know, you want to, it's a status symbol. And you want your daughter or probably your daughter or your son, little kid, to learn to play the piano. And pump organs were out at that time. They were, they were gone. They were done. It was over. The pump organ era was over. And so there was companies that started making guitars because in a, in a particular format of guitar that was like a smaller guitar because pianos were really expensive and not every family could have a piano. In fact, most families could not. But you could buy a guitar. The price of a guitar at that time was $1. Wow. And, you know, I've, I've got an old Sears Roebuck catalog page, and the, 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 the deluxe model was $1.50. Whoa. I know. Did you get extra strings with that or something? Yeah, I, I don't know. It probably was made out of wood instead of cardboard. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, no, they were made out of wood. So there was a whole thing that happened where the mothers and the parents would send the young girl, usually a little girl for some reason, boys, I don't know, they didn't, it was girls, and they would send them off to a teacher to learn how to play the guitar, and they would play like one or two tunes on the guitar, and they taught them sort of easy stuff. It was finger-style guitar, and that was the entertainment on a Sunday afternoon. You now, know? how did you start this whole thing? When, how old were you when you decided, hey, I'm going to... Listen, you dived into this thing head first. You uh, disappeared inside of your guitar. I did. When did that happen? Well, I didn't have a guitar at first because I was five. And so when I was five years old, um, there's a place up on the river on the other side of Kentucky over near, uh, across the river from Owensboro is Rockport, Indiana. It's a little bitty town. And my dad was the manager of the Kroger store in Rockport, Indiana. And when you're the manager of the, that Kroger store, you have to do everything because there's like three employees. But we were little kids and my dad on his spare time, he loved music and he loved music so much that he would he volunteered to work at this little bitty recording studio that was in that town. And the man who ran the recording studio was named Clayton Spurlock. You'll never forget that name. Clayton Spurlock. It's Clayton Spurlock. He's, and he played guitar. And he was the first person I ever saw play a guitar. And he would play like Froggy Went a Courtin' and he'd sing those songs to us. We were little kids. My brother was four. I was three. I was four. I was five. My brother was four. And we would go to the recording studio and it was sort of the most boring place in the world for little kids to go because my dad got into it and we were little bitty kids and we would just like, when can we leave? <laughs> but one day this guy came in, his name was Spider Rich. And if you guys don't know who Spider Rich is, he's one of our Kentucky guitar heroes and he's the guy that wrote Yakety Axe, Yakety Sax, the theme from the Benny Hill show. <laughs> Okay, and um, he's, he wrote a lot of other stuff and he was a really great guitar player. Well, one day they said Spider Rich is coming to record and he was gonna do a demo in this little studio, probably because they'd let him do it for free, I'm guessing. And he came and he played my sweet little Alice Blue Gown, Chet Atkins style, and from that moment on I wanted to play the guitar and so that's how I got started. What was your first guitar? My first guitar was my uncle's 1957 Telecaster. Well, you started off right. I know. He's well, he, would let me, he would let me use it. Yeah. He wouldn't let me touch it except if I was, you know, cleared and, and you know, I, he was sure I was going to put it back right. And right. I was little. I was, at that point, I think I was nine. Right. And then when I was 10, my parents bought me a guitar. It was a Stella guitar. Mm -hmm. It cost $25. And um, that was my first guitar. You know, I was wondering about the, you know, if this tradition was going to be carried on. And 
you know, it worries me. And then I see folks like Parker Hastings. Stand up, Parker. Stand up, Parker. Here in the audience tonight, who was on, uh, he will be on uh, one of our early shows. He's already played here. What do you think about that, young man? I'm, I'm telling you, this, this is never going to die. And, you know, people talk about t technology is going to kill all this stuff. Actually, YouTube technology and, you know, the, the, the sharing of information with, uh, in an unlimited way m keeps all the forms of music alive. And this is not going to die. It's going to become better than bigger than ever. Pat, would you play us out tonight? Thank you so much for coming out tonight. We sure appreciate you.